Good morning, I'm Todd Prafke and this is State of the City. I'm the City Administrator here in St. Peter and I want to welcome you. Thanks for clicking on State of the City. It's great to have you with me today. Um, today is May 6th. Uh, again, a Tuesday morning, a very beautiful Tuesday morning here in the Valley. Now I have two primary missions today, one of which is to talk about the workshop from just last night, um, Monday, May 5th, and then also to give you some tidbits, some information that I hope will be useful as you live work or play here in St. Peter. I also want to encourage you to find more information on our website or on our Facebook page and I'll give you some information about how to locate those in the future. Or give us a call if you have a question. We're, we're happy to visit with you if you'd like or stop down and visit. We're happy to visit with you in person if you'd like to. Now working on my first mission was uh, uh, talking about that workshop from just last night. Here's the meeting agenda. By the way, you can see the whole uh, packet which is about well that thick. Let's see how many pages. I can't remember exactly. Um, I don't know, 40, 50 pages. You can see that on our website if you want and see everything that the City Council um, sees as they prepare um, for the workshop. But anyway, uh, last night they held their workshop and the first item on the agenda was a tour of Rivers Edge Hospital. Um, for many of the council members, they haven't been on a full tour of the hospital and so it was great. Um, the hospital is a wonderful asset within our community and George and Paula gave a wonderful tour of the facility. Um, we even got to go into the operating rooms, put on all the um, equipment and stuff so that you don't contaminate the area, kind of a jumpsuit kind of thing, all that kind of stuff, booties and a hairnet, and we looked great, by the way, and uh, we went through the operating rooms and, and many other places within the hospital, so that was great. After that, Anne and George gave an update on the audit of the hospital, which was just completed and accepted by the board last Wednesday. And so I won't go into a lot of detail about the financials there. I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Um, but if you want some more information, give George a call or give me a call. We'll be having some more information on that website, on our, on our website in the future so that you can see it. But the hospital is doing better financially. Um, not as great as we'd like it to do, but better. And uh, so we're really happy about that because it provides such an important service within our community. Um, so um, again, best care anywhere, Rivers Edge Hospital. Some of the other things that the council talked about is, frankly, we spent a lot of time talking about the electric fund budget. As some of you may have read in the paper, they've talked about this a number of other times and really trying to come to a conclusion as to what to do. Um, we have additional financial needs. Really our goal from a staff perspective is to have about a, an additional $150,000 revenue in that 2015 year that's spread over everyone. Um, that's about a $12 million budget overall. Um, by the way, of that $12 million, about 85%, a little bit less than 85% on average, is purchase power. Um, so that's not, the $12 million isn't what I get to use to help manage that system or Lou gets to use to manage that system. Um, most of it goes to buy the power that, well, makes your light bulbs and your laptop computers go and everything. And so um, there's not a lot of room in that budget. Um, but um, the council, um, again, had just a tremendous amount of discussion. If you're really interested in that, I'd, I'd encourage you to read the packet material on our website. Um, staff um, has asked and recommended a 2% across the board increase on energy only, so not base charge or not demand charges for those commercial or industrial users, but energy charge. I think the council is going to go a little bit different direction. Um, they're looking to put um, the vast majority of that increased need for revenue on the large commercial and industrial users who enjoy a much less expensive rate than residential customers to begin with. And so uh, right now it appears that they're feeling that's probably the right way to go. Spent a lot of time on that budget. We also talked about the water budget and the wastewater budget. And we don't have any significant changes for those budgets either, but getting the council up to date and we'll be asking them to pass all three of those budgets at the upcoming council meeting here in a little bit less than a week. Um, while we do not see any need for rate increases in the water or wastewater budget at this time, um, about a year and a half ago, a uh, year ago, the council took action and so there are some phased in rate modifications that are coming up um, in the first part of, well in January of 15 for sure. And so um, those are already planned for, so be ready for that. And if you have questions about it, um, please give us a call. The other thing that we talked about was the Jefferson Water Plant site. So that's a um, piece of real estate that's located at the corner of Jefferson and Washington near South Elementary School. Um, for many, many years that was the site of a water treatment plant 
and a number of water wells, a couple of water wells. Um, a few years back, that was demoed, and so now that property has been available for some kind of development, and some of the neighbors there may remember that we sent them a letter asking them what they'd like to see happen, and we got some feedback, um, and one of which was, it should be a dog park. Um, one of which was, we should build an indoor pool there. That would be a great thing. And I think the council's very um, um, interested in hearing what those perspectives are. Um, but we, we do have a dog park already, and there is indoor pool up at the high school, um, so the need for an additional indoor pool is probably not so great that we would go out and spend uh, multi-million dollars on another pool. Um, so the council really is focused on doing some residential development there. And to that end, they've told staff to go out and talk with some of the developers. And so we're going to see how that moves forward. Um, we do have a couple developers, um, one in particular that's interested in doing some upper end rental in that area, which falls in line with what the council's looked at and has seen as a part of the housing study from the end of 2012 as a need, as a defined need within the community. And also just looking at it as being, boy, that would be a great site for something that um, had tuck under garages because of the elevation of the site. And um, it's a great location close to elementary school and um, Gustavus Adolphus College. So we'll see how that develops, but um, we talked about that a little bit last night as well. Um, we did not talk about frozen water service lines, even though that's on the agenda. Um, one of the primary folks that did a lot of work on that was unable to be at the meeting last night, so we wanted to make sure they were there as they provided a lot of information um, for the for the packet. Um, again, if you want to see more about that, take a look on our website and you can check out our packet. Now with that, let me get to some tidbits. First of all, park restrooms opened on the 1st of May. So um, as you go out and enjoy the parks, which today would be another great day to get out and enjoy the parks, um, those restrooms should be available for you. Now, um, if you read a, a week ago, maybe it was two weeks ago, Hot Sheet, I talked about parking in the park. For whatever reason, we still have people that think they should be able to drive into the city parks. And um, please don't do that. Um, we don't come and drive on your front yard, so don't drive in our front yard, our community front yard, especially Minnesota Square Park. And so if you have a large event that's going on there, um, you reserve the park, you can certainly ask for special accommodation if you have equipment and other things that have to be brought in. Um, but please don't drive in there without that special permission from the city. Um, it's a danger. Um, it can damage the park. It can damage sidewalks. Um, it just isn't what those parks are designed to be. It just really isn't. So please stay out of those parks. Um, the next items that I want to visit about are um, on May 30th and 31st, we have opportunity for a curbside appliance pickup. You have to sign up in advance. It's $15 for most appliances. And so contact the finance department here, and you can sign up. And um, you set your appliance out on your curb, and they will come and get it. Also, we're doing furniture, and there are a number of different prices depending on how big your furniture is. Again, contact the finance department. They can get you signed up so that you can just set it out at your curb and someone comes by and picks it up and takes care of it for you, hauls it away. And the last one is on May 31st, we have electronic pick, electronics pickup. Um, so that would be TVs and computers and that kind of stuff, VCRs. VCRs <laughs> and uh, uh, all those kind of things. That'll be at the old library lot just across the street from where I'm at here at Front Street in Nassau. And there are there's a price for that that you got to pay when you get there. You don't have to sign up in advance. You have to pay when you get there, and it's generally 25 cents a pound. Now there are a few things that they're taking at no charge, um, so check the listing for that. But you can just stop down and, and get your electronics recycled appropriately. It's a wonderful thing to do uh, to get rid of it to have your space back, um, but also it gets appropriately correctly recycled and that's good for our environment. Hey, I also got to mention the community center has changed hours now. We're going to summer hours and so on weekdays we're open from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, on Saturdays it's um, 9 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon and on Sundays we're closed during summer hours. So watch for that to change back in just a little bit. And last but not least we want to give a shout out of congratulations to Council Member Brandon and his wife Genevieve. They had their second child here just yesterday, just Monday morning at um, um, Councilmember Brand told me at 4:22 in the morning, and the, his, their new son's name is Leo Jeffrey. So congratulations to them! How cool for them, and uh, we're very excited for him. Um, he, he couldn't make the workshop last night because of that that's an important gig, so he was there at that. So anyway, thank you very much for clicking on State of the City. It's always great to visit with you. Hope to see you again next time.